Hey guys and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking at how we can integrate distributed tracing into a Spring Boot application. Now in my earlier video which is linked somewhere here, we had explored how we can integrate Spring Cloud Sleuth and then visualize the traces using Zipkin UI. Today we'll be looking at how we can integrate Jagger which is based upon open tracing and then visualize the particular traces using the Jagger UI. So with this, let's get started. So to start off, we're going to go to start.spring.io and here we are going to add just one dependency that's going to be the web dependency because we are going to add some kind of rest endpoints and we're going to give the group ID and a name distributed subs okay they're going to make use of java 16 and the rest is going to be the default settings so with this we're going to generate the project cool now i have already created the project here for us and we are going to add certain endpoints to this right so i've created a controller here so in this controller if you see here what i have created here is uh, i have added two parts here part one and part two the intention of path one here is that it calls part two at a particular uh, service which is running at location local host 8090 so the intention here is that we run the same application but as two separate instances the first instance we're going to run it at 8080 while the second instance we're going to run it at 8090 now these were the two APIs that I implemented here. Now the main thing that we wanted to look into is how we can do the tracing for this call that came in from the client to path one and then afterwards from path one it went to path two, right? For this, let's open the browser and go to open tracing. Open tracing is a specification through which you can specify tracing in a distributed service. So now since we are using Jagger, Jagger is based upon open tracing. Now we're going to use the Jagger instrumentation inside our project, right? So for this, let me go to this registry here and search for a spring instrumentation for Jagger. Now there is one that is present here called as Java Spring Jagger. There's also a generic one that is Java Spring Cloud, but we will be using the Spring Jagger one. Let's open this and go to the GitHub repo. Now in the GitHub repo, you see this particular dependency that we have. So this is actually the instrumentation dependency that we will need to add it to our project. So when we add this to our project here, which I have already added, I have added version 3.3.1 version of the open tracing Spring Jagger Cloud starter. Now, while I was creating this particular video, I saw that there's a release here, 3.3.2, but when I searched it on Maven, it was not available there. So I stuck to 3.3.1 and did the implementation. So now we added the instrumentation dependency, right? What are the next steps to be done? So first thing we need to do is we need to allow this instrumentation to actually create the traces and then inject it into the request that has been forwarded to the next service. This is one part. Now the other part is once the traces that have been created, we want them to be reported to a particular Jagger UI so that we can easily interpret what the particular traces are. So these are the two parts, right? So first part, what we're going to do is we're going to create a particular bean for the rest template. So why we create this particular bean is that when we are actually sending the request to the next service, we'll be using this rest template and then making a call to the next service. Now, because we added this particular dependency inside a bomb XML, this dependency automatically adds an interceptor inside this particular bean that we just created. This allows the interceptor to inject basically certain headers inside the request that is being sent out to the next service. Through this mechanism, it actually allows for the traces to be linked across various paths. So this was a part about generating of the traces and then propagating it to the next service. Now let's look at the next part that is reporting these traces to the Jagger UI. So for this, first of all, let's start the Jagger UI itself, right? So I have this Docker Compose file. So I have this particular Jagger tracing uh, Docker file 
which has basically all the required dependencies for running the Jaeger UI. So it's going to be running and exposing certain ports. So I have mapped this particular ports. There are two ways that you can communicate with this particular UI. One is by the UDP or by the TCP ports. Now these are the two TCP ports while these are the two UDP ports here. What they are going to do is we're going to start off this particular Docker image. So Docker compose up. So here we have started the Jaeger UI. So now to have a look at the particular UI that I have just started, I'm going to go to this particular port on localhost. So, so here we see that the Jaeger UI is open. And now, right now, we don't have any kind of traces. If I refresh this, there is nothing available. Just the Yaga query one. And if you search for this, this is actually going to show you all the traces for this particular Yaga UI. But we are actually not interested in this particular traces, right? Now, what we are going to do next is set some properties such that the application then sends the traces to this particular interpreter. So let's go to resources. In the application.yaml, we're going to add this particular property here. So open tracing, Jagger, HTTP sender, and the URL. Now, this is the other port that we had mapped inside the Docker Compose file. So this port refers to the UI, and this port refers to the to the port to which it starts accepting the traces. Now, to see this particular property, you can actually go back to the particular GitHub repo and here they tell you how you can actually send this particular traces. So right now what we have done is uh, we have created an application which already has the Jaeger instrumentation dependency inside it and then we configured it such that it actually generates the traces and then reports it to the Jaeger UI. So now what we are going to do is we are going to start this particular application. I'm going to first of all set JDK 16 and then I'm going to run the command jar minus jar and I'm going to run the target that was being generated and then I'm going to give it an application name called as service one. So we are running the first service right now which is run, going to be running at port 8080. So let's start this. Now in the other tab I'm going to again set JDK 16 and then afterwards run this instance but this time i'm going to run it at 8090 and i'm going to call this as service 2. so right now what i'm doing is i'm running the same application but two separate instances running at two different ports so yes we have the second application also up and the first application also up here right let's do the next part that is let's make a call to the first service at path one so when I make a call here, what it does is it actually gives me the response like path one plus path two response is been combined and given to me. This is because when path two actually receives it, it actually just returns response from path two. And then path one actually gets the response from path two and then concatenates it with itself. And this is what we get as an output here. Now, the interesting thing that is coming up now is going to be about the traces part. So let's go to service one. So in service one, you see here, there are three parts over here. So the three parts here refer to first is the root span ID. Then we have the current span ID, and then we have the parent span. ID. So these are the three parts of the tracing that that is involved here. Now, if you see, if you notice here, the root span ID and the parent span ID right now is the same. Why? Because since service one is the originating service, that is the first service that receives the particular request from the client, it therefore uses the root span ID as its own parent span ID. Now let's look at the trace IDs in service two. So in service two, what we see is we see the root span ID here, then we see the current span ID, and then we see the parent span. Now, if you see this parent span ID, that is E127, this is actually the current span ID of service one. So in the service one here, we have the current span ID, which becomes the parent span ID for the next service. Now, this was the traces that we saw in the log, right? Let's visualize this in the UI. 
Now let me go to Jaeger and refresh this. So here you can see we have the two services that have got registered here. Let me open service one. And here you see we have three spans, but we had actually two spans, right? Because span for service one and then span for service two. Let's look at this. So what are these three spans actually? The first span actually refers to the root span. So when I open this particular section here, you see that this particular span ID is actually the root span. That is the actual trace for the entire request. Then comes the service one span ID. That is the span across the particular service. That is basically when service one started processing the particular request. And this span ID for service two is when service two started processing the particular request. So now when you see here, you see these particular lines here, which tells you actually the various points in the particular span. So if you see right now in the first point here, this is the part wherein it actually gets that particular request. Then here it actually logs that particular message, that incoming request at part two. And then afterwards, this is the completion handler as such. But now if you notice here, there is the span actually extends even before it receives a request. Why? Because this is the part wherein the request was actually being sent out from service one. Because the span actually exists right from the point the service one actually sent out that request to it actually receiving the particular response. And hence you can see this particular span containing these three sections. So today we saw how we can integrate the Yaga instrumentation into a Spring Boot application and then visualize the particular traces and its corresponding spans onto a Yaga UI. Now if you have any kind of questions, feel free to leave in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel to see more such kind of videos. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.